finally, another episode of Iron Taskmaster is here. I'm back home now after a trip away where I didn't bring my microphone, so I couldn't really record while I was away, which was actually really annoying. I was planning on recording while I was away. The reason I didn't bring my usual mic that I record with was I thought I could get away with using one that I used to use that is more portable, but my mic input on my laptop turned out to be broken, so that was really disappointing and I couldn't use my microphone that I was planning on using, so yeah. Tried to record a bit of commentary last episode with a different mic that I was able to borrow off someone, but the audio quality was absolutely shocking, so I decided it would be best just to wait until I get back home to record a commentary for this episode. So my apologies on the wait for that. I have been playing the game while I've been away and I've made some big progress and I've had some pretty crazy things happen and there's been at least one absolutely insane thing happen uh, which you will soon see for yourselves. But yeah, I have a bunch of clips collected from while I was away so I'll commentate over the top of those and when I've caught back up with those clips I'll be going back to the usual live commentary. At the end of last episode I was given the final possible step from Sherlock for my first ever master clue on my Iron Man which was to smith a rune med helm. Now, I was level 70 smithing, and to be able to smith a rune med helm, I needed 83 smithing and a plus 5 boost using a spicy stew. Now, I believe a popular method of training smithing for Iron Man accounts is to smith gold ore into bars at Blast Furnace, with a high percentage of those gold ores bought from the Blast Furnace store. Because I haven't gone down the usual path of buying a whole lot of sand and soda ash or seaweed to eventually turn into air orbs and air battle staves, I haven't had as much GP sitting around in the bank compared with other Iron Man accounts. So basically to get to 83 smithing from level 70 with around 1 mil cash was definitely going to be quite slow. I only had about 1 mil in the bank which is actually quite ridiculous to try to get 83 smithing with considering I was buying ores. But what I decided to do was to buy mithril ores and coal from Blast Furnace. Then at Blast Furnace I would smith them into bars and then I would make mithril plate bodies which I then high out to get my money back with a slight profit. And then I'd rinse and repeat that all the way to level 83 smithing. Definitely quite slow going, although I did have a few gold ores and other ores left over in the bank too, which I used along the way, which was quite nice. Definitely not the most efficient method, but I was super keen on getting my first master clue completed, especially considering it was the final clue possible as I was up to the eighth step, which is the last possible step for a master clue. And I really didn't want to give up on it, even though the reward would probably be pretty crap. You may have seen me at the start of the video buying Amelie's packs with some marks of grace, because I recently hit 75 herbal, I'm now able to easily boost to make stamina potions. So I made some to use at Blast Furnace, which was really, really handy. And there was also another clip where I hit 90 strength in between training smithing. That was at Gargoyles, and I was there just to test out if I could get a bit more cash or any ores towards smithing. But I didn't end up continuing with that as it wasn't worth it. But it was awesome to hit 90 strength, my first level 90 skill on my Iron Man, and definitely worthy of a mention. Anyway, so I managed to get 83 smithing. I was super, super stoked with that. I'll need at least 86 for the diary cape, so not many levels to go at all, which is absolutely amazing to think about. But to the master clue. Well, I did get the plus five boost that I needed to make the rune med helm with no problems. So it was finally time to get my master clue reward. Now, before I go to that clip, I just want to say that despite not recording live commentaries while I was away, because I was playing on my laptop, it did have a built-in mic. Now, that mic sounds pretty bad, so I really didn't want to use that to record commentaries with, but I did decide that just in case, on the off chance that something crazy happened while I was playing, that I may as well have it recording to get my reaction. Anyway, so I once again apologize for the bad audio in this next clip, but um, yeah, I think it was one of those crazy moments that I'm pretty glad to have had my laptop mic recording for. China, China. Oh, the dream. Oh my, oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> hey, have a look at this. Dad. Oh, come on. Come have a look at this. I won't relate to it. This is Excellent. one of the rarest items mm -hmm. in the game, if mm -hmm. not like the rarest. And I just got it, the first clue scroll from this thing. You just scammed it off some other kid. No, <laughs> what? Scammed it off some other kid. Alright. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't believe that. I can't believe that. That's ridiculous. Of course I get it while I'm on holiday. Yes. Standard. 
Well, that was absolutely crazy. I don't even know what happened just then. I'm just recording this on my internal mic at the moment, so I apologize if it's crappy quality, but that is insane. I've never gotten third age before in, in RuneScape, and that is absolute madness. To have gotten that on my first hard, I mean, master clue scroll is nuts. Every clue after this is going to be awful. That is crazy. I actually th thought that it was better stats or the same stats as Aram's Road Bottoms, but it's, it's actually slightly worse than Aram's Road Bottoms. But that said, Fashion Scape is going to be on point. That is crazy. I cannot believe that. So yeah, there you go. After getting a Robin on my first hard clue and a Gilded Plate Body not long after that, I have now managed to get myself third age Mage Bottoms on my first ever Master Clue. Also, apologies if my reaction was a bit cringy. I really couldn't believe it, and especially after putting in what was a fair bit of effort to completing the Master Clue itself, it was absolutely crazy to get a piece of Third Age as a reward from that. I also apologise for calling it one of the rarest items, or the rarest item in the game. It probably qualifies for one of the rarest items, I would say, but I'm not really sure about the rarest. Um, I, I, yeah, it's probably not the rarest item in the game. That was probably something I just said as a spur of the moment type thing. Also, I'm not sure why my dad said I probably scammed it off some kid, um, but that was hilarious. My dad was in the room at the time too, so I was absolutely stoked that I actually got Third Age, of course, so I asked him to come check it out, even though, as he said, he probably couldn't relate to it, so it feels bad, man. But the main thing is I got a piece of Third Age, the first ever piece of Third Age I have ever received while playing RuneScape at any time, and, and it wasn't Third Age Van Braces or some crappy piece too, which is an absolute relief. Um, not that it would actually be so bad on an Iron Man account, I guess, anyway, but that's pretty cool. So yeah, there you go. 83 smithing, I would definitely say was worth doing after that. And it's gonna be some absolutely awesome fashion scape. And I will actually be totally using the third age mage bottom for magic attack bonus. Um, that is of course until I get Aram's robe bottom, but that's actually awesome that I can use the third age mage bottoms for something other than fashion scape as well. It'll actually be useful potentially for a little part of my Iron Man account, which is pretty cool. So what do you do after you get third age from a clue? Well, my answer to that is do another one, of course. I had the clues for another master clue sitting in the bank, so I went off to do another one, going for the ultimate back-to-back -back loot, of course. Along the way, I bought a cannon as one of the clues required a white full helm plate body and plate legs, which meant I had to kill a bunch of black knights. There's also a dire requirement to get 1300 Black Knight kills. I think I stopped at just over 800 or 900 kills though, and I'll go back and finish that off at a later date when I have more cannonballs, but that's all I needed to continue the clue, so I decided I'll just stop there. I completed an elite task in the Western Provinces area along the way. That was to pickpocket an elf, and I was boosting from level 81 thieving for that. Unfortunately, I didn't record pickpocketing the elf and getting the boost I needed first try. I don't know why I didn't record that, but I managed to get the boost first try and pickpocket the elf first try, which is absolutely awesome. And then, amazingly, I was given another casket, this time for my second Master Clue, of course. But, unfortunately, no back-to-back -back ultimate epic loot for me. But hey, I don't think I can complain, and I don't think I will be complaining for a long time about some of my RNG. Now, I was at a bit of a crossroads. I was keen to get into some Slayer again or do some Barrows. However, I decided I really should get as many Diaries done as I could so that I could enjoy the benefits of having them done and I may as well so I could enjoy things such as Elite Void or Battle Stuff from Varrock and other really useful Achievement Diary rewards that there are. My main goal was to complete all of the Hard Diaries, but I decided to get any Elites I could complete done along the way if they were worth doing. When I mention the Elite Diaries, I mean individual Elite Tasks complete. Although I'm getting close to completing some Elite Diaries, I still have a way to go before I can fully complete any Elite Diaries. I needed to do a bit of skilling to get the remaining Hard Diary requirements, so I trained from level 60 to 69 Hunter. Even though I could have used a boost for 69 Hunter, I decided to just get it out of the way instead, as I'm going to need at least level 75 Hunter for the Elite Diary requirement if A plus 5 boost is possible. I also trained from level 52 to level 62 construction, and I definitely cannot wait for the day I have more cash in the bank to use to turn logs into planks with, so that I can get a higher construction level. 
Uh, it would be absolutely amazing to have something like level 80 construction so that I could, you know, store more things in my player owned house and have access to all the crazy teleports and the pool thing that regens your health and crap. I don't even know what that's called, but that would be awesome. The first hard die I completed was in Falador. Definitely very nice getting that 15k antique lamp. Put that towards Runecraft as usual. And as far as other rewards go for completing the Falador hard die, the giant mole will now drop noted mole skins and mole claws, which is really nice. Fairly good method of getting crushed nests for Sarabrews is to kill the giant mole with the fairly hard complete. I can then trade in those claws and those skins and I can get some bird's nest, uh, sorry, bird seeds back in return, which is really nice. And the mole is also automatically located when I enter the mole there too. So that's really handy and that may be useful in the future. Falador Shield 3 also recharges 100% of my prayer once a day now, which will also be useful from time to time. And I have an increased chance of receiving higher ores while cleaning pay dirt. And I have access to the bank at the Crafting Guild now as well. Although I'm not really sure how useful that will be for now, but I see a lot of high levels using that bank. So quite a few nice rewards from having the Falador Hard Diary done. Following that, I went on to complete the Western Provinces Hard Diary. For that, I needed to, of course, get one kill on Zora. However, I have killed Zora a bunch on my main account. So I didn't really find that too difficult. Although I definitely was a little rusty and I definitely noticed a significant downgrade in gear that I was using while killing it on my Iron Man. I actually pretty much completely ran out of supplies and I died from Venom not long after teleporting out. But at least I got the kill. Definitely not my best time but hey I got it done and the whole Venom thing without anti-venom potions definitely used up a bunch of my food. And I probably should have brought more anti-poison. Anyway, I got the one Zora kill required and for some reason I don't have the clip where I collected the reward from the Elder Gnome Child. But I did get a runecraft level from the antique lamp, which was lovely. And I immediately went on to upgrade my Void Knight top and Void Knight bottom to the elite versions at pest control. I already had the 400 pest control points there, so that was absolutely lovely to be able to just go and upgrade instantly. And I'm definitely going to get a lot of benefit out of that armor. In addition to the elite Void Knight equipment, the main useful rewards from having the Western Provinces hard diary complete is that I can now access a red Chinchomper hunting area, which I think is quite good. Plan on hunting black chins in the wilderness eventually, but if I'm not good at that, if I keep getting PK'd and failing miserably, I could possibly use that private area. I'm not really sure how good it is. I also have teleport crystals now hold up to five charges, so that will again be quite useful. I get one daily teleport to the Pistorus fishing colony. Definitely a nice reward, especially now that the Kraken, I believe, has been moved there, although I'll probably still use my quest cape and the fairy ring. However, it'll be nice for fishing monkfish as well. And that's a really quick teleport to use to get there. And lastly, I can now buy the Crystal Halberd for 750k, which sounds like an awesome weapon, so I'll definitely have to get around to buying that at some point. Not long after I finish off the Wilderness Hard Diary 2, once again, there are some more useful rewards that I now have access to. I can teleport once per day to the Fountain of Rune using the Wilderness Sword 3, so that is really cool. I'll absolutely use that for charging any jewelry I have. I get 50% more lava shards per lava scale as well, and that is actually quite nice now that the Wilderness Slayer is out. So if I get a Lava Dragon's task, I'll absolutely get use out of that. And I also now have access to a few more shortcuts. can have five ecumenical keys at a time. And then there are two more really useful rewards. One, I can choose the destination when teleporting through, with, uh, through the Wilderness using the Ancient Obelisks. And the second really useful reward is I can telegrab Wine of Zabrak in the Chaos Temple, and they will be in noted form. So that's really, really nice, especially considering how packed Zami Wines are at Goblin Village. There's so many bots and so many other people doing it. Plus, getting them in noted form will leave plenty of room for tanking supplies to hopefully avoid PKs. So I could possibly stay there for a while and get a whole bunch of them and then teleport out. I have a whole bunch of grimy dwarf weed or dwarf weed in my bank, which I really want to turn into ranging potions at some point. So I'm really, really happy to get that, especially. After getting the Wildy Hard Diary complete, I did a little bit of runecrafting to get high enough to boost to make death runes. That was so that I could complete the Ardy Hard Diary. And I have to say that I'm so glad that I have received a shield left half drop. That was not too long ago, actually, because you literally need a shield left half to complete the Ardy um, Hard Diary. And that isn't very common by any means, of course, so I really feel sorry for any Iron Man out there, and I'm sure there are a bunch of them who might not get that drop for ages and really want to get the RD Hard Diary done, or maybe even the RD Elite Diary done, and as a result, they just can't progress through the RD Achievement Diaries at all because they don't get that drop. Anyway, I finished the Hard RD Diary off, which is awesome. Once again, I now have some more useful rewards unlocked. I have a 10% increased chance of succeeding when pickpocketing, which is great. I receive an increase in noted drops from the Tower of Life, which will be really nice when I need to collect some extra herbal secondaries. And the Arty Cloak 3 too, which I can get a whole bunch of, which is actually a really decent K 
cape, you know, it has decent stats, so that'll be really useful if I don't want to risk much in the wilderness or somewhere else. This then left one hard diary to complete, and I would have reached a pretty awesome milestone, which was to complete all hard achievement diaries, and that was the Varrock Hard Diary. Unfortunately though, I needed a U seed to grow a U tree within the Varrock tree patch to finish off the last task, and I didn't have one in my bank, so I had to leave that task. My plan was to put 10 subjects from Kingdom on maples and I'll just eventually get one from a bird's nest there, which wouldn't take too long hopefully. But that was awesome to get the other hard diaries done that I hadn't yet completed anyway. Definitely some super handy rewards there and I definitely feel like I've made a whole bunch of progress. With those diaries complete and just waiting on the UC to finish off the last task, I decided to try and get 75 crafting with supplies sitting in my bank. I cut a bunch of uncut gems and I used some glass supplies up in my bank to get there. I only needed a few levels so I can now finally boost to level 80 crafting from level 75, a level most new iron men seem to get straight away but I've put off for ages as I really didn't like hopping for supplies at Charter Boat. I couldn't really be bothered doing that and the glass make spell now on Lunas is definitely going to be a game changer for all of that anyway. Honestly, at this point, I'm tempted to just collect green dragon hides from green dragons when I go to collect dragon bones for 85 prayer with the wieldy elite diary complete. Um, hopefully I can just do that for all my future crafting XP, that would be pretty sick. Obviously I'm going to have to do some charter boat operator um, hopping for sand and seaweed to make the most of battle staffs from rock. I might need some uncharged orbs, I might need to charge those up and use those with my battle staffs. That would be use, good use of some crafting XP, obviously, from those battle staffs, but hopefully I won't have to do as much as most other Iron Men, because it would be so sick to avoid most of that. I don't know what it is, but I just don't enjoy hopping and seeing, like, a completely empty charter boat operator, and, like, it's just, I don't know, it's just a bit of a tedious process, so I would be super stoked if I could avoid most of that. Anyway, so I got the plus five boost, and I finally made some Amulets of Glory, which is so useful. Absolutely love having access to the teleports and that'll be super useful for room crafting with the abyss as well as of course making some air orbs and of course just in general really nice teleports to have. I kept one unenchanted for clue scrolls and I made sure to make use of the fountain of rune teleport I get once a day to get some easy charges on my amulets of glory. Especially with the off chance of getting an eternal amulet of glory. I figure I may as well give that a shot given my recent luck seems to know no boundaries. Following 75 craft, I completed a Wilderness Elite task that requires you to kill Vedion, Callisto, and Venonatus. Currently, all of those wieldy bosses are safe spotable, although it is also worth a mention that to safe spot each of them, it can be pretty tedious and risky still. There are plenty of PKs around, and especially as an Iron Man, there is a strong chance that even if you kill one of the bosses, someone may have damaged it and you won't receive the drop. So even though it is possible to safe spot the bosses, it is still not easy to always get the drop. Uh, especially as an Iron Man, of course, and all of that said, I was really lucky to get one of Venonata's most useful drops for an Iron Man, and that was the 500 noted red spiders eggs, absolutely perfect for some future super restores. At that point, I completed pretty much all of the elite tasks that I could, with the exception of a few where I would need a fairly high spicy stew boost. I may end up getting those done soon, but for now, I decided to leave them as I couldn't yet complete all of the tasks in any elite diary, so I felt I may as well wait until I could, and by then I may have higher stats anyway and not require a difficult boost to obtain. So it was finally time to go back to Barrows in my hunt for more death runes for Slayer, as well as of course the chance of finishing off a Barrow set for the Mauritania Elite Diary. And you guessed it, more luck was thrown my way, which was absolutely sick. I managed to get a Carol's Expo, which was awesome. I plan on using that for getting more Barrows kill count and killing Aramut Barrows in absence of a blowpipe. And I also don't have a Zami book or other ranged attack item to put in my other hand when using a rune crossbow. So I feel like the Carol's Expo is the best option for now. And then two chests later, I got a Torag's Helm, another Barrow's item I didn't have. And on top of that, I now have the Helm, Hammers, and Plate Body in the Torag set. So now if I get either the Torag's Legs or Varak Helm, I'll have a completed Barrow set, which is super cool. Not too many chests after that, I received an Elite Clue. And of course, I could not resist turning it in for a Master Clue. In future, I've decided that if I do get Elite Clues, unless you guys really want it, I'll just complete the Elite Clue and not upgrade it to a Master as there is a chance of getting a Master Clue from all tiers of Clue Scroll anyway. And it might not really be worth the time collecting an easy, medium and hard Clue each time I get an Elite. Although, once again, I am super excited to try Master Clues considering my luck and just in general because they're pretty cool to complete. So, it might be inefficient, but I might just go ahead and do some more Master Clues. It depends how I feel at the time, I guess. Unfortunately, it was not long before I was asked to go visit Sherlock. And he of course gave me a clue that I couldn't complete at the time, which was to kill a reanimated abyssal requiring an insult abyssal demon head, as well as at least 80 slayer with a plus five boost. 
Fortunately for me, I was only one level off of 80 and I didn't have much XP to go until 80 as well, so that was pretty good. So I just did a little bit of Slayer. Oh, no. No. <laughs> oh, I died. <laughs> Along the way I managed to get some strange Tsar item from the Tsar Slayer Tusk which may or may not be useful for something. I'm not really sure what it is actually. I think it's some sort of sword thing like a little machete sword thing. Yeah, but I'm not really sure if that's useful for anything. But that was kind of cool. And I managed to get AD Slayer on a Dust Devil Tusk with one or two kills later summoning a Choke Devil which was pretty nice timing. Unfortunately, there was no super fancy superior drop for me but hey, I'm not complaining about my luck guys. Um, it's all good. The AD Slayer, I used Wild Pies and Boosted to kill some Abyssal Demons, which is pretty awesome. That is the first time in Old School RuneScape that I've ever killed an Abbey Demon, and in general, in all of my time playing the game, I haven't ever killed them while the whip has been a good price too. Not that that really means anything because I'm an Iron Man, but it's pretty cool to be able to go do. Unfortunately, I didn't get a whip drop, but I did collect several in sold heads. I think maybe 81 Slayer might come back and try lucking out on a whip just because it would be so damn awesome to have one on an Iron Man. I was able to complete the skill challenge for the Master Clue, whereby I was immediately given the same challenge again, which I finished again without any trouble. And then Sherlock, once again, ruined my Master Clue, as he is known to do. He handed me a clue scroll requiring a dragon two-handed sword, Vandos boots, and an obby cape. I did have the obby cape. However, I decided it would be way too much of a tangent for me to go after a dragon two-handed sword and bandoosh boots, especially with my current gear and stats, but mainly I just wanted to be able to get some death runes from Barrows, maybe a bit of gear, and then I really wanted to get stuck into some Slayer to help get some solid gains towards all achievement diaries complete. So that was unlucky, but all in all, I have absolutely nothing to complain about. Made some really nice diary progress this episode with basically all of the hard diaries out of the way now, just the elites remain, and I'm still super stoked to have a third age item unbelievable, let alone on my first master clue. That's it for this video guys, sorry it has been a long time between uploads, next episode should be up this time next week approximately or sooner. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next video.